The Task Plugin update has blown my mind, but before we get there, the Canvas Conversation plugin is another AI plugin using ChatGPT, but does it through the Canvas, which is really nice. And when you go into the settings, you've got user agent, the token, all the normal stuff you'd see. This is a Canvas example, but for me, ChatGPT seems to be always too busy to use. The plugin groups, uh, plugin groups, plugins <laughs> and it allows you to bulk actions so enable or disable a group of plugins all at once allowing you to nest them and actually delay the loading of a group of plugins on startup of course some limitations are that some plugins don't work at the moment and when we go into the settings you can see you can generate commands for groups which means when you go into the command palette you can actually enable or disable groups of plugins with a command and when you add a group, so a test group, we've got the general settings and there's the command for that group in specific. You can auto add plugins to a specific group and then you can change the devices these groups are on. You can also enable the plugins on startup. The plugins tab give you a search of all your installed plugins. This is my test vault, so it has like 200 and something plugins in, but you can search for them. So the plugin update tracker is always enabled on this vault because I want to know the updates that's going on. And then we go into the groups and then you can search through all the groups. I don't have any apart from this test one, so it's not going to show. And in this view, we can then enable a turn on or disable, turn off those plugins. The IVRE, I -V -R -E, plugin uses whatever this is. I'm not going to say I know what it is because I don't. It looks like data analysis, but I don't know. If you are familiar with the tool, it looks like you can then import the information with whatever either does into an Obsidian file format, and then you get all of the graph, backlinking, and data information inside of Obsidian. The image caption plugin does what it says on the tin lets you add a caption to any image and as you scroll down you can see the formatting you get the normal image embed but after a pipe symbol you can add the caption now when you have something in that sort of area so after the pipe maybe the size you can still add inside of speech marks a caption which is quite nice but i personally don't caption any of my images most of them are in articles anyway the novel word count plugin is looking to i think combat better word count a little bit in some areas anyway and it will show the word count or page count or note count or whatever metric next to the file in the files explorer and you can have three different data types or, or well you can have three different parts of data next to the file you can then abbreviate what's shown. So instead of words, it would show W, etc., etc. You can then change the alignment. So whether it's on the right of the files in the middle or just underneath. And as you can see here in the test file, there's zero words. I type hello. Now there's one word and it shows me next to the file in the files core plugin. If I type, are you OK? That's now four words and it's showing in the files. The Week Planner plugin allows you to set commands on an inbox page or a today page, file, folder system, very similar to the Vault build I did recently, but this is a plugin rather than built through other plugins. And you can see there's the commands. And when we go into the settings, you can set the working day, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, base directory, which is essentially a folder. And then when we go into Obsidian, go to the command, and actually activate one of these. So let's say uh, add a to do, I can add a description of the task block or checks box block, and it's going to create the folder directory and add an inbox file in that folder with the test task. Right, now this is really cool. What custom statuses in tasks allow you to do is obviously add custom statuses, but there is so much more to this update than what you may think. There is loads of other features that's been added, which you can see here. You can search for the different statuses, add different elements to the query, behind the scene fixes, and you can see all of that in the change log. But when we go to the tasks plugin, you'll now see task statuses, the core status, i.e ticked or not ticked and you can edit that you see task status symbol task status name task next status symbol so what's done afterwards and then the actual task status so to do etc etc with some added ones and then when you go down to custom statuses you can add basically any letter or symbol into a task status you can add a new task status add all these status types supported by the minimal 
community theme, the ITS community theme, and then unknown statuses. And when you click on that, it just imports like everything, like all of the tasks. So if you're a minimal user, easy addition, ITS user, easy addition. And I believe there are issues for other themes. So when you go to the appearance tab, if you have the theme installed, activate it. If not, browse for it. Here's the minimal theme, install and use the minimal theme and then the task can be used. Now, when we go to the docs, the help documentation, this is part of the update, all the information you will ever need is inside of here. And I think this is one of the plugins that has the best documentation from my experience anyway, looking through plugins. But what we're gonna do is actually create a custom status and add some different views of it. So I've copied the same as the help documentation and you can see they're all ticked because Obsidian default view is just ticked or not ticked. But it had letters inside of those square brackets. And when we go from the reading view back to source view, you can see, well, now there's nothing there. So it's defaulted back to the originals. So what I want to do is change the look. Instead of it being done or not done, I want to add a CSS snippet. I'm going to use the example from the help docs so you can follow along if you've got the help docs open. I've clicked through. Now I'm going to click into download the CSS snippet. And it's a long file CSS gobbledygook that I don't understand half of. But I'm going to use VS Code, which is free. Then open my Obsidian Vault folder and you can see it's the test fault and it's got the dot obsidian folder then find the snippets folder it will probably be above the themes folder i already have one if it's not there go to obsidian appearance and then click on the folder icon next to css snippets and that will create the folder or open it wherever it is now when you go back to vs code new file title it whatever you want i'm going to call it checkboxes and have dot css so it's a dot css file copy all the information from that downloaded file and then paste it in here you can download it and go through files this is my personal preference then save it to make sure that it's actually saved then go to the css snippets refresh if it's not there and turn it on of course if you understand css you can create your own you can customize other snippets or whatever's going on but when we now go into a reading view or live preview they are rendering images that are different from just done and not done but when we tick them they still go to complete that that default ticked box but when you hover over it's still acting like a tick box so you still get there oh you can click on this or you can type on this but it's always going to the x you can see the x is in between the brackets so i'm going to undo all of that and instead go to the command palette and change the task so edit task and you can see down the bottom we now have all of those statuses in progress cancelled unknown etc and when we go into the task settings we can actually add any of these that we've created so we've got some letters in there and i'm going to bring in the minimal theme set using the minimal theme to make sure it's all consistent uh, and now when we go in and we edit a task, the statuses are all the statuses from the minimal theme. So I'm going to call this information. And now it's got a light bulb because that's what's in the CSS theme of minimal. Uh, if we go in and edit and change this one to in progress, you've got the in progress icon and you can see it's changed it. But we still have the same issue that when you tick it, it's either done or not done. So it doesn't cycle through the icons that you may want yet, but you can actually add that. So if we add a new task and we say task status symbol, let's say this is important. So exclamation mark, the task status is important. Now the next status symbol is D. This is going to be a to do task. So this is an important to do task. The next task is I'm going to add a task and edit it is going to be D because it's gone exclamation D. This is doing, I've put important so I know what cycle this is. And then it's gonna to go to X. I'm gonna change the status type to in progress. So now it's going from to do to in progress. Add another status, then edit that status. And this is going to be the status symbol X because that's where we've just directed the last one to. Status name is done, important. So I remember what cycle it is. And then this is going back to the exclamation mark. This is a type of done because we need to close it out. So now we have to do as an exclamation mark in progress as D and then done as X. 
Now when I come out, you can see I've got the same page up twice, but the letter inside the brackets is changing. So when I click it, it goes to X. Then when I click it again, it goes to exclamation mark, click it again, D. So the icon is changing, the style is staying default. So when we go to the appearance settings and add a CSS, whatever that is, you can see the icon is now changed. So the icon is mirroring the cycle that created with the D exclamation mark and X, which of course is fully customizable. And a very quick example of how the query has changed, you can now use status.type and look for, say, in progress tasks, and it will show all of the tasks of that status. And when you go to the settings, they are any of the custom statuses for in progress.